Several months after the birth of their son Aiden, Dorothy and her husband Michael decided to part ways. The separation was fraught with tension, as the couple was not on amicable terms. This strained atmosphere added to the complexities of arranging care for their infant son. Despite these challenges, Dorothy and Michael eventually succeeded in devising a parenting plan aimed at serving the best interests of all involved, particularly young Aiden. The agreement they reached was a balanced one, where Aiden would spend alternate weeks with each parent, Michael would look after him for one week, and Dorothy would take over the following week. This arrangement allowed Aiden the benefit of equal time with both parents, fostering a relationship with each of them as he grew. However, an incident during one of Aiden's weeks with Dorothy raised her suspicions about Michael's intentions. It was a regular midday when Dorothy observed Aiden engaging in behavior that struck her as highly unusual. This unexpected observation made her pause and reconsider the dynamics of their current arrangement wondering about the underlying causes of her son's odd behavior. When Aiden ambled into the living room, he seemed to be in his usual sprightly mood. However, instead of diving into his toys or flipping through his picture books, he pulled up his pants and gazed intently into them. Dorothy, his mother, observed him quietly from the corner of her eye, assuming this peculiar behavior was just a fleeting moment of childish whimsy. She continued tidying up, expecting him to resume his play any second but Aiden remained motionless, his attention fixed on his pants for an inexplicably long half-hour. At first, Dorothy dismissed it as one of those odd, unexplainable things children do, however. Concern began to knit her brow when Aiden repeated this behavior every day for the entire week he stayed with her. Each day, like clockwork, he would halt whatever activity he was engaged in, pull at his pants, and stare down with a fixed concentration that was unusual even for a child as naturally curious as him. Dorothy's initial theory was that perhaps this was a new phase of developmental curiosity. Aiden had always been a child captivated by the world around him. Often offering delightful and unexpected reactions to daily discoveries, however, the consistency and duration of his actions suggested something beyond mere fascination. When Aiden visited her again, Dorothy decided to investigate further, hoping to uncover any discomfort or physical issue he might be experiencing. She gently examined him particularly focusing on his legs and the fit of his pants, but found nothing amiss, puzzled and increasingly worried. She couldn't shake off the feeling that there was a deeper reason for her son's behavior, something that wasn't immediately visible. The pattern continued, always around the same time, 12.13 p.m. During lunchtime, Dorothy began to wonder if the timing was significant, perhaps triggered by an external cue or internal rhythm. She monitored him closely, looking for any other signs that might explain the enigma. After Aiden returned to his father's home, Dorothy shared her concerns with her friend Olivia during a visit. She recounted the strange episodes, describing each detail in the hope of gaining some insight. Olivia listened intently, her expression turning thoughtful. After hearing everything, she hinted at a possibility that had not yet crossed Dorothy's mind. Could Michael, Dorothy's ex-husband and Aiden's father, be influencing this behavior in some way. This suspicion was compounded by recent events. Just a few weeks after Dorothy started seeing someone new, Michael had discovered the relationship. Shortly after, he had sent Dorothy a letter filled with hurtful comments and a chilling promise to make her life miserable. Could Aiden's strange new habit be related to some sort of manipulation from Michael? The thought was disturbing, but Dorothy knew she had to consider all possibilities to protect her son and understand the root of his mysterious behavior. Dorothy couldn't shake the feeling that her ex-husband, Michael, was manipulating their son Aiden's behavior for ulterior motives. She wondered if Michael had instructed Aiden to act in certain ways to keep her in a constant state of anxiety. Perhaps, she thought, there might even be a sinister plan to use Aiden to monitor her activities, despite her reluctance to entertain the idea. The evidence seemed to pile up. Michael displayed unmistakable signs of jealousy towards her new relationship and Aiden's recent behavior changes only fueled her suspicions. The more Dorothy pondered, the more plausible it seemed that Michael might indeed be using their son as a tool for espionage. She noted that Aiden began to act unusually at precisely 12.13 p.m. each day, a coincidental time soon after Dorothy returned home from her part-time job. She was convinced that Michael, aware of her schedule, might have embedded a surveillance device in Aiden's belongings. Determined to uncover the truth, Dorothy took Aiden to the changing station one day. She meticulously inspected his skin and then his clothing, probing every seam and fold, yet found nothing. Undeterred, 
She even checked his diaper in her thorough search. Finally, she scrutinized his shoes, a last possible hiding spot, but still, no chip or device was found. Despite the lack of physical evidence, Dorothy's suspicions did not wane, convinced more than ever that Michael was somehow spying on her through their child. Dorothy decided to set a trap to catch him red-handed, while in the same room with Aiden, she made a calculated move by calling the police, she reported her suspicions and concerns to the authorities, emphasizing the involvement of their young son which prompted an immediate response. The police reacted swiftly due to the potential risk to the infant, while one team of officers arrived at her home, another unit was dispatched to Michael's residence, he was arrested promptly and taken in for intensive questioning. As the situation unfolded, Dorothy found herself engulfed in a whirlwind of confusion and concern about the implications of her actions and the well-being of her son. What followed was an unfolding scenario that left Dorothy grappling with a mix of emotions and unanswered questions. As Michael was forcibly escorted to the local police station, Dorothy was comfortably settled in her home, feeling a sense of triumph. She was convinced that Michael would regret his decision to spy on her once the police intervened, however, an entirely unexpected twist awaited her, while Dorothy was basking in the success of her scheme. A sudden knock on her door disrupted her, she was puzzled, as she hadn't anticipated any visitors during her moment of vindication. Curious and slightly irritated, Dorothy approached the door and peered through the peephole, the sight of police officers outside sent a chill down her spine draining the color from her face, confused and anxious, she wondered why the officers were there for her, as their involvement was meant to deal with Michael, not her, with a shaky voice, she opened the door and greeted the officers, asking, what can I do for you, officer, the officer, with a polite smile, began to explain the situation, which was far from what Dorothy had expected, at the station, Michael had been placed in an interrogation room where he was questioned about the alleged spying activities, Despite the serious allegations, Michael's bewildered reaction suggested he was either an excellent actor or genuinely unaware of the accusations, he expressed shock, particularly when confronted about supposedly planting a tracking chip in his son's clothing. A claim he found baffling, Dorothy listened in disbelief, if Michael was indeed spying on her, he would have been prepared for the police's arrival, doubt and fear started to creep into her mind as she reconsidered Michael's cunningness. The officer then explained his presence at her home, it was imperative to ensure her son's safety by checking for any unauthorized tracking devices, with Dorothy's consent, the officer produced a specialized device designed to detect electronic chips. He assured her that the procedure would be quick and harmless, calling over her son Aiden, the officer gently asked for his cooperation, Dorothy watched anxiously, wondering if the device would reveal any hidden truths about Michael's actions and what implications it might have for their family's future. Aiden giggled at the police officer, thinking it was all a game, and happily complied. The officer meticulously scanned Aiden up and down with the scanner. Searching for five minutes before making a startling discovery, looking up at Dorothy, who was anxiously waiting with a nervous expression, the officer shook his head and said, Well, it's good news. I can't find anything on your son, however, this news did not bring relief to Dorothy, was there truly nothing to worry about, or was Michael more cunning than she had believed, the officer left Dorothy's house, promising to update her with any new details, left alone. Dorothy had time to ponder what was really happening, as she teetered on the brink of madness from the uncertainty, she received an unexpected phone call, to her surprise, it wasn't the authorities but her ex-husband, Michael, what could he possibly want? Would he threaten her again or reveal that he was aware of her actions? Reluctantly, she answered the phone, needing to know how much he knew. She braced herself for Michael's fury over her contacting the police. But the conversation took an unexpected turn. Michael began explaining what had happened to him, seemingly unaware that Dorothy was behind the police involvement. He asked if the police had also visited her regarding Aiden, seizing the moment. Dorothy confessed, she explained that she had called the police because of a threatening letter and Aiden's odd behavior, she thought it was better to be safe than sorry, to her astonishment, Michael reacted unexpectedly. He apologized for everything, explaining that the letter was written in the heat of the moment and that he didn't mean what he had said. As for the spy chip, he swore he would never do such a thing to their son, this revelation left Dorothy puzzled, if Michael wasn't behind the spy chip, then what was happening with Aiden? Seeking clarity, Dorothy asked a crucial question, is he doing the same thing when he's with you? To her surprise, Michael understood immediately. 
he revealed that Aiden would pull down his pants and stare at the ground around 12.13 p.m., just as he did with her. This consistency in behavior only deepened Dorothy's concern. Now, back at square one, Dorothy was more worried than ever. She still had no idea what was going on with Aiden. Dorothy needed to figure out what was going on with her son and quickly, with no one else to turn to, she asked Michael for his thoughts on the situation. After some discussion, they thought of a potential solution. Although Aiden hated going to the doctor, it seemed necessary to get to the bottom of his unusual behavior. Dorothy booked an appointment with her local doctor and prepared to take Aiden in for an examination. Getting Aiden into the car was a nightmare, but it had to be done. Once they arrived at the doctor's office, they sat in the examination room. The doctor, trying to keep Aiden calm, distracted him with a lollipop. Promising he could keep it if he made it through the examination, Aiden's eyes lit up with joy, and he nodded enthusiastically. The doctor conducted a preliminary examination but couldn't see any obvious signs of anything abnormal. He proceeded with a more thorough check, taking his time and examining Aiden for about 10 minutes. Finally, he turned to Dorothy with his findings. I'm happy to say that your young boy is perfectly fine and healthy. There's nothing physically wrong that would explain his behavior, he said. The doctor recommended that Dorothy keep an eye on Aiden to see if any new details emerged. Dorothy left the office feeling disappointed. She had hoped the doctor would find something definitive. Over the next few days, she watched Aiden carefully. He continued his odd habit of pulling down his pants and staring at the ground every day at around 12.13 p.m., like clockwork. There had to be something she was missing, but she couldn't figure out what it was. Even Michael was stumped when Aiden exhibited the same behavior during his visits. Desperate for answers, Dorothy turned to the internet and started researching what kind of behavior was normal for children Aiden's age. She even borrowed a parenting book from the library, hoping for some old-school explanations. After thoroughly going through everything she could find, she came to a startling and heartbreaking conclusion. None of the books or web pages described behavior like Aiden's. His actions weren't listed anywhere as typical for a child his age. Dorothy was gripped by a deepening sense of melancholy as she came to terms with the possibility that her son, Aiden, might be facing some unique challenges. In the midst of her contemplation, her phone's ringtone pierced the silence, jolting her. It was the doctor on the other end. Her heart skipped a beat in anticipation of what he might say. The doctor's voice, calm yet urgent, requested that she bring Aiden in for a checkup the following day. They set the appointment without delay. As the hours ticked by, Dorothy found herself wrestling with anxiety. She pondered what the doctor might have discovered about Aiden's peculiar behavior. She clung to a sliver of hope for a breakthrough, yet she was apprehensive about the potentially unconventional methods the doctor might employ. The uncertainty was agonizing. She would have to wait until tomorrow to learn more about her son's condition. Her mind raced with questions over why Aiden had been behaving so oddly, particularly his strange daily ritual of looking into his pants at the exact same time. The significance of the appointment time became apparent the next day. The doctor had set their meeting for noon, compelling Dorothy to prepare Aiden earlier than he preferred, to coax him into getting ready without a fuss. She promised him his favorite treat, a lollipop. At first, Dorothy hadn't thought much about the specific timing of the appointment, but it dawned on her that there might be a reason behind it. They arrived on time and were ushered into the examination room. The doctor's expression was grave, more so than usual. He explained that he planned to observe Aiden at 12.13 p.m., the exact time he engaged in his odd behavior. The clock's hands moved slowly towards that minute, and tension filled the room. However, contrary to everyone's expectations, Aiden did nothing out of the ordinary. Dorothy's confusion mounted. Why wasn't Aiden acting as he usually did? Then, in a surprising move, the doctor went to the far side of the room and turned on a radio. He asked Dorothy for her favorite station, and as she relayed the frequency, he tuned in. Shortly after the music began, Aiden's behavior changed. He looked down, tugged at his pants, and stared intently at the floor. Dorothy was stunned, seeing this. The doctor gave a knowing smile and turned to Dorothy. He asked if the radio was usually on around noon at their house. Dorothy nodded, slowly realizing the connection. The doctor's smile widened as he explained his theory. Shaking Dorothy to her core, the familiar sounds of the radio had inadvertently become a trigger for Aiden's behavior, a revelation that would start them on a path to better understand and manage his condition. Dorothy had been puzzled by Aiden's peculiar actions and wondered if the radio might be influencing him somehow. Your son is simply attempting to move along with the music from the radio, 
The doctor clarified patiently, he's not yet skilled in dancing. So what you're seeing is his unique way of communicating his emotions through movement. Dorothy was astonished. Could it really be that Aiden's unusual behavior was an expression of his inner feelings? The doctor reassured her that it was quite normal and that with a bit of positive reinforcement, Aiden would gradually refine his way of expression. Following the doctor's suggestion, Dorothy enrolled Aiden in dance classes designed for toddlers. In these classes, Aiden was able to learn proper dance techniques in a fun, supportive environment. As he grew more comfortable and adept in his dance movements, the incidents of him suddenly dropping his pants ceased entirely. This newfound skill not only boosted Aiden's confidence but also provided him with a delightful way to express himself. Do you have any insights after watching the story? Feel free to tell us in the comment sections below. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.